With the New York Yankees failing to reach a World Series for the fourth year in a row, this now becomes an even more pivotal offseason. Many thought the missing piece to a World Series was a true ace, but even the $324 million thrown at Garrett Cole, who did pitch really well, proved to not be enough. The Yankees now enter this 2020-2021 offseason knowing a few constant issues that seem to arise every postseason. Number one is clearly the inconsistent hitting and how this team during the regular season always finishes near the top and runs scored, but in Game 5 against Tampa Bay, for instance, they managed to score only one run. Number two is the starting pitching injuries that occurred this year. The Yankees' expectations heading into the year were to have a top three of the rotation of Garrett Cole, Luis Severino, and James Paxton. You can argue Tanaka over Paxton, but the point is that two of their top three or four starters weren't even on the playoff roster and having to pitch guys like Jay Happ and Tanaka more than they envisioned was a big issue. And number three, while they seem to have an abundance of it on paper, they could still use another reliable bullpen arm. The injury to reliever Tommy Canely in the beginning of the season was a huge blow and the Yankees had to rely on some guys like Luis Sessa and Jonathan Lewisica. Not saying those guys are the worst, but not the type of arms I want to rely on during playoff baseball at least. There are a few roster decisions the Yankees have to make with their own guys and whether they want to keep them or let them walk. So with that said, here would be my offseason wish list for the Yankees. The main free agents for the Yankees this offseason are Masahiro Tanaka, Jay Happ, James Paxton, Brett Garner, and of course DJ LeMahieu. The only guy I'd personally want to bring back is obviously DJ LeMahieu. For LeMahieu, the choice seems obvious. I was absolutely thrilled when the Yankees brought him over a couple offseasons ago because I figured he was the perfect contact hitter that the Yankees needed, plus he was a great defender. Well, as much as I love the move, he's even exceeded my expectations. His 162 game average since being a Yankee is absolutely staggering. A 336 batting average, 386 on base percentage, 30 home runs, 108 RBIs, 125 runs, and a 922 OPS. He has been playing like an MVP, and if the Yankees can re-sign a 32-year-old for around four years and between 75 to 80 million dollars, that would be fantastic. For Masahiro Tanaka, he's a soon to be 32 year old and while he may not be the ace anymore that we envisioned when he arrived in 2014, he has proved to be a solid number 3 or number 4 starter, but based on how I plan to approach this offseason, I would let him walk in my scenario. It's not like you're letting Tanaka go at age 27, chances are he could decline from here on out and it would not surprise me. It's not like the Sonny Gray or Lance Lynn situations where you let them walk in their prime and they thrive elsewhere, I just don't see Tanaka being that guy anymore. If the Yankees actually brought him back in real life, I wouldn't be upset about it, but I'd prefer the deal to be no more than three years because of his age, mixed with the partial UCL tear from years back that still scares me. As for Hat, Paxton, and Gardner, I'd let them walk as well. Hap had a nice run in 2020 after getting off to a slow start, but based on his age and inconsistency, I think it's time to let him go. Paxton has great upside and I was super excited when the Yankees acquired him from Seattle, but he's proved to be an injury risk and also inconsistent. And lastly for Brett Gardner, I was ready to move on last offseason in favor of guys like Corey Dickerson or Cole Calhoun, but the Yankees extended Gardner for another year instead. He had his moments in 2020, had a nice postseason, but now he's 37 years old and I'm ready to see what the promising Clint Frazier can do on an everyday basis as an everyday player. There's just way more upside there. Maybe bring him back strictly as a bench player and I still like having a guy from the 09 championship team, but it might be time to move on at this point. Another thing I would add, and this is a big one, is that I would try to trade Gary Sanchez. Yes, I know he's 27, has all this upside, he's on a cheap contract, but it's reached a point where he's struggling to get the bat on the ball with consistency. His strikeout percentage has increased every year since 2017, and it was at a ridiculously high rate of 41% this year, including the playoffs, meaning 41% of the time he was at bat, he was striking out. You won't get the return for Sanchez that you would have got three years ago, but an idea I'd throw out there is looking to make a trade with old friend Derek Jeter. The Marlins made the playoffs this season, but had almost no help from their catcher position. Jorge Alfaro was out sometime with COVID-19, but even the last two seasons combined, he has a 30 on base percentage and doesn't have the upside that a Gary Sanchez has. If I'm the Yankees, I'd like to get one of their young starters in return, and the name I would go after is Eliezer Hernandez. Hernandez missed the last month of this season with a lat injury, but the 25-year-old showed some real improvement in six starts this season. He posted a 3.16 ERA, a 1.01 whip, 11.9 strikeouts per nine, only five walks allowed, and 21 hits allowed in 25 and two-thirds innings. This could be the perfect time to buy low on the talented young right-hander, and if he ever fulfills that potential, he could be a key starter in the playoffs. Hernandez also has a very controllable contract all the way up until 2025, when he is due to be an unrestricted free agent for the first time. 
With the re-signings and one trade taken care of, let's go into free agency. I personally don't see this as a big free agency for the Yankees spending wise, but there are a couple guys out there I'd be really interested in signing. Assuming that Sanchez is traded in this scenario, I'd bring in the Chicago White Sox free agent catcher James McCann. McCann was an all-star in 2019, but was relegated to the bench more times than he deserved after the White Sox signed Yasmani Grandal before the 2020 season. McCann still managed to hit 289, a 360 on base percentage, 7 home runs, 15 RBIs, and an 896 OPS and only 97 at bats. He was also in the 88th percentile in pitch framing according to Baseball Savant in 2020. A contract for the 30 year old McCann should not be outrageous. I'd expect somewhere around 2 years and 20 million, which I would definitely give him. From 2018 to 2020, McCann and Gary Sanchez had the same on base percentage, and defensively, McCann is the better option. Next, I'd want to add a starting pitcher that I'm sure some Yankee fans are familiar with because he played with the Orioles for a while, and that's Kevin Gausman. In the early 2010s, Gausman was one of the top pitching prospects in baseball, but could never seem to figure it out in Baltimore. The former fourth overall pick finally flipped the switch as a member of the Giants where he had an awesome season in 2020. Gausman started slow, but by the end and a shortened season, finished with a 3.62 ERA, a 1.10 whip, a career high 11.9 Ks per 9, and tied a career low with 7.5 hits allowed per 9. When you look at his profile, you can attribute his mini breakout to using some different mix of pitches. In 2019, Gausman completely stopped throwing his sinker, and his split finger usage jumped up over 20% since 2017 as well. Gausman always had good stuff, but sometimes all you need is a little change in your pitch sequence and it can change your career. Gausman is 29 years old, has a ton of familiarity within the division, and won't cost a crazy amount like a regular ace, although there's a lot of potential that he can pitch like one. There were rumors last August at the deadline that the Yankees were trying to acquire Gausman, but the Giants were still in the playoff race and decided to hold off. He did say he's open to staying in San Francisco, but if the Yankees offered a nice three-year deal for around 40 to 45 million, then maybe that can sway his opinion. Lastly, they could look to add another bullpen arm because 2020 proved you can never have too many of those guys. There are a lot of good veterans out there and I don't see them breaking the bank on another reliever with guys like Chapman, Ottavino, and Britton already making a lot of money, so let's take a shot on a cheap veteran. My choice of the names available would be Greg Holland. Holland was a pivotal piece in the dominant KC Royals bullpen for a while and part of their 2015 World Series run, but since then has fallen off. Holland's had a weird career recently. In 2019, he opened the year as the Diamondbacks closer, posted a 1.37 ERA in his first 20 appearances, but after that, he completely fell off the rails and had an ERA of 8.44 the rest of the way. After being designated for assignment by Arizona, he spent the rest of the year in the minors with Washington and then signed a minor league deal with the Royals where he found success once again. He made the Royals big league squad out of spring training and in 28 games he went 3-0 with 6 saves, a 1.91 ERA and a whip below 1. If the 34 year old Holland regains his form then great, if not then you can release him and try the younger guys like Michael King or Nick Nelson. Holland if signed would not cost too much, I'd expect a 1 year deal for around 5 million dollars so it's really not that bad. So to recap, my offseason wish list is this, let guys like Masahiro Tanaka, j Hap, James Paxton and Brett Gardner walk, extend DJ LeMayhew for 4 years, trade Gary Sanchez to Miami for the young starter Eliezer Hernandez, and lastly sign free agents James McCann, Kevin Gausman, and Greg Holland. I know this is not the most exciting offseason, I'm sure some people wanted to sign Trevor Bauer or JT Realmuto or even both, but for some reason I don't see the Yankees breaking the bank for one player this offseason, but we shall see. Leave in the comments what you think the Yankees should do this offseason, hopefully you enjoyed, and thank you for watching.